video and uh, thought this would be another uh, great opportunity to uh, show you guys some stuff out in the field. So this is a 30 ton compressor. We just got changed yesterday. Uh, it took an entire day for a couple of guys to get this put in. Uh, we had to get a crane involved and uh, lift it up here. Uh, note we're, we're kind of up high and uh, uh, the distance from this is, uh, or from where we had to set the crane up is pretty far. It's about 500 pound compressor. So we got it in here yesterday, got the vacuum pump, let the vacuum pump run all night and I came in this morning and I'm, uh, I'm checking uh, vacuum. Didn't have a real good vacuum on it this morning so I have uh, put some uh, nitrogen in it to break the, break the vacuum and now I'm pulling it back down. And what we're gonna do, what I got, what I also, I was just getting into the thing, and this is the, the main part of the whole uh, video, is this contactor. Now, this is a three-phase 460 system, and here's our power coming in, and there's a contactor. Now, if you look at that contactor, she's burnt up pretty bad, and this this one is, is stuck so we uh, also burned out a uh, $60 fuse yesterday or the day before um, testing it out so the video is about changing out a contactor and this would pretty much be the same for a single phase or a two-pole contactor, or a three-phase, three-pole contactor. And what the contactor looked like originally is this, and if you notice the two screws right here, and that cover comes off, and then it exposes the contacts. And if you're looking at systems, and you should always, always take a look at all the contactors, because they'll arc and arc and arc every time they fire and eventually they're going to burn themselves out so a uh, good idea to check these out if you see a tremendous amount of pitting or arcing or carbon buildup you might want to go ahead and suggest to the customer to replace it or just go ahead and replace it and uh, and move on all right so the other thing is is that in this particular case we have two really charred contacts now, if it, it, it is very possible that two of these welded themselves together. If two of them welded together and it lost a phase and it continued to run, it very well could have single phase that three phase compressor, could have burned it up. And that's what we had was a, a, a dead short on, uh, on the windings. And in a later video, I'll draw out a compressor and show you what the, in, the the windings look like and how to test for all that but uh, so if that's the case and I don't know if if this phase just stuck and we blew a fuse I don't know if the compressor caused this failure or the contactor caused the compressor failure but that compressor I mean this whole repair is probably going to be close to close to fifteen thousand dollars that uh, that uh, compressor there is about eleven thousand dollars so you definitely don't want to just uh, uh, put it together and hope for the best. So my thought was here is let's go ahead and get a phase monitor. And this is a three-phase three phase line voltage phase monitor. It'll work from uh, 190 volts up to 600 volts. And what this does is, uh, let me get the wiring schematic. Okay, so here's L1, 2, and 3. So here's L1, 2, and 3. Comes in on one side and it monitors our, or excuse me, this is a this is two-pole contactor. We got a three-pole contactor. So you got L1, 2, and 3, and it's monitoring the line voltage, okay, to make sure there's not a voltage spike or a drop, okay? Uh, and in some areas you can end up uh, getting brownouts which will increase your amp draw could hurt components so this would monitor that and shut the unit down and it, you can program this to automatically reset or you can set it to uh, manual reset alright so moving on 
monitoring incoming voltage. And you notice here's our contactor. Here's our three poles, one, two, three, one, two, three. And here's our coil indicated here, which is uh, here's one wire and the white wire going in the back, or to see it better, would be here. A1, A2. This is our coil, as indicated right there. All right. So now look at the other side of this monitor. You got one, two, and three, load side. So you're monitoring the load side of things. So if one of these contactors sticks, or two stick, and the other one doesn't, it's going to be, it's going to sense a loss in phase. If that senses that, it's going to shut it down. Okay, so what I've got here is a burned up contactor, and it's also got a side in switch on it, which I'm going to have to take off of there. And it can directly mount to the side of this, and you see what that, that pushes down, it's got this little lever here. It will uh, activate that side switch. So let me go ahead and, and uh, get all these loose and get ready to change this out, and I'll take you through the change out process. Okay. So there was a 5 16th screw holding the bottom of this in, which looks, this is a newer contactor and comparing, comparing it to everything else in here, this contactor has been replaced before. So then you notice that there's a screw, Phillips screw, right there, which I just loosened up so that can drop out of there. And we're going to loosen up these terminals. Okay, I'm going to drop that right out of there. Yeah, just as easy as that. Okay, so these two have spade connectors on them, so it's going to be easy to identify those. And if you ever have a problem trying to remember where wires go and you're changing something out, take a picture of it. Draw a diagram. Have a number or lettering machine that you can just make some uh, labels if you want. Alright, so anyway, this is our coil. And that is our line, so I'm going to take these wires off here. These, these two wires don't have any spades or fork connectors of any kind on them, so we're just going to pop them off. We'll know where those go. All right. There, you see how I did that? Hmm. Okay. Push that in there. See that little lever right there? down in place, but before we do that, to make life a little bit easier, we're just going to go ahead and loosen up these wires, turn those here. You want to get in the habit of putting it on the side of the screw that's going to draw it in. 
and this has a flat plate that just push, much pushes down but it also rotates so just get in that habit because not all terminals have that flat plate on there put it on the side that's going to draw this wire in there Okay. And while we're out here, good opportunity to put our that on there. And we'll snap our switch on here. Remember in the other video I did, one contactor operated the compressor, the other, or this switch, energized the condenser fan contactor. Loosen up our terminals. And so while we're doing this, uh, you just, you know, look around, you can see that, uh, uh, Things have been redone. These uh, these ribs, RIB relay in a box, um, have been added to a control system. So you got stage one, two, and three on this. Uh, and look at all all the wires are the exact same color. So when you're tracing this out, you got to rely on the terminal block one through twelve here, and then each wire has. Like here, this one has 209A. And each wire has its own number, so you can look at your wiring schematic and uh, figure out which wire goes where. To tell you the truth, I don't even think this unit has a wiring schematic. <coughs> All right. those down really tight. Busted wire. I have no idea where that goes. If you're gonna cross something like that and kind of, you know, go in a circle to see where it connects, actually, it looks like it looks like it connected there like that. But then there's nothing for this to connect to, so and that could be a hazard there. So I think we're gonna tape those up, and maybe in use, maybe in use, may not be. All right, so switch is working, pushing in the contactor. All right, so now we'll wire up the line voltage here. So I got to go do something else, so I'm going to stop this video here, and uh, I'll come right back to it here in a sec. Okay, so when it comes to uh, putting these wires in here, oh, let me start over and say, when it comes to take, taking them off, uh, you can label them. See how you got one, two, and three. You could label them one, two, and three, or you, if you know that you can pull them off, leave them in the same position, you won't have to worry about it too much. But uh, one rule of thumb I like to follow is to uh, start with the one that's the hardest to get to. You can start putting other wires in place, then you're kind of getting things in your way. One thing I failed to mention is that the main disconnect 
on this unit is uh, off and locked out. So you want to make sure that you do that before you get started. I'm looking for my 516 screw. Oh. There. Well, there's a that'll work right there. It's probably the original screw that was in it. All right, there you go. Thanks for watching. Have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and if you like this sort of stuff, you know, stay tuned. We uh, do uh, lots of videos like this. So, Talk to you soon. See you in the next video.